Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 26, 2018 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Mozilla apparently is attempting to distinguish itself as a more security-focused alternative to some of the other browsers. As part of this, Firefox has been rolling out some new security features, either within the browser or as part of the Mozilla website. The latest example is an integration with the Have I Been Pwned web service. Have I Been Pwned collects email addresses, passwords that are leaked at various breaches and offers a free API to query for your email address. Now, Firefox have implemented this kind of interestingly using what Have I Been Pwned called their range API. Instead of sending a hash of your email address back, which of course could be linked to your email address by simply reversing the hash or brute forcing it. They're just sending the first few digits of that hash to have I been pwned and then a list of all the hashes that have been breached is returned which then can be compared to a hash of your email address locally. So this way, not even have I been pwned knows that you queried their database. Mozilla also set up a service where you can actually give them your email address and then have them periodically monitor it for new breaches. Essentially, it is just a front end for the have I been pwned service. So if you already signed up for it directly, no need to do so again via Mozilla. Several password safe tools, like for example, one password, of course, have implemented similar features. Now sticking with browsers for another story, Chrome 69 has gotten some bad press for how it preferentially treats Google properties when it comes to privacy. First of all, if you're using Chrome 69 to visit a Google website, you will automatically be logged in to that website, which of course does give Google additional access to tracking information about you. In addition, if you are deleting all cookies from Google Chrome 69, well, you're not actually deleting all cookies, you're deleting all cookies except the ones related to Google. This is actually noted when you're looking at the feature, when you're looking at the clear all cookie feature, it does note that clearing all cookies will not log you out from Google. If you still do want to delete your Google cookies, you first have to log out from Google, then delete all cookies. In that case, if there is no active session associated with these cookies with Google, then you will still delete the Google related cookies. And Cisco released an advisory with details regarding how its products are affected by the Fragment Smack vulnerability. Remember, that vulnerability was discovered earlier in August, and essentially what it means is if a device is hit with an excessive amount of disjoint fragments, well, uh, then you may have a denial of service condition. As far as Cisco is concerned, about 80 Cisco products are affected by this vulnerability. For some, there are updates available, but uh, not for all of them. If you're using Cisco products, this latest advisor is a great research to double check if any of the products that are in use in your network are vulnerable. And apparently there are ongoing issues in Windows 10 where BitLocker suspends itself during security updates. Now, this may actually be an intentional feature. The problem is that during security updates, the system has to reboot with BitLocker enabled. The user would have to enter passphrases and the like. So it may be necessary to temporarily disable BitLocker in order for to allow for reboots for new drivers to be set up and installed and then BitLocker should engage again. Well, uh, that apparently doesn't appear to happen all the time. So if you have done a security update on Windows 10, if you're relying on BitLocker, double check that it is still enabled after you are applying these security updates. 
And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.